This is the story of 10 royal mistresses of the House of Hanover Windsor, starting with the mistress of George I, the German mistress, and ending with Camilla, the mistress who married her prince. But the most topical one today is the story of Edward, the king who abdicated to marry his mistress, and the two married mistresses before her. Edward had a dark secret. When he was a naval cadet at Dartmouth Naval College, my father was in the year below him. Edward had a severe attack of mumps and this left him badly damaged and he became sterile. There's always the fear in him that he can't sire an heir, which is so important as a, for a crown prince. His first love affair is with Mrs. Frieda Dudley Ward, whose husband works in the royal household. She is older than he is. She has two children. He spends a lot of time at her house. Her husband's working very hard, and he's in the house a lot of the time because he loves the warm family atmosphere. He's had a cold, loveless upbringing with Queen Mary, and he's really clings on to Frieda, who's a kind of surrogate mother as well as a mistress. And she helps him decorate his holiday home, Fort Belvedere, in Windsor Great Park. And this is their love nest. He writes her passionate letters. The letters have all been put on the market, and some of them are actually in Australia now. And he writes her in baby language, keeps apologizing for his poor sexual performance which is really very interesting that we reveal a great deal about him in these letters. She, Frida, gets fed up with him. She wants a virile lover, not an abject little boy clinging to her. But she is very fond of him. She stays on in his life as a confidant when he has his next love affair with Lady Thelma Furness, wife of the wealthiest man in England, Lord Marmaduke Furness who has a vile temper and a couple of mistresses and gives Thelma a very hard time. She reacts by falling in love with the prince. They also spend a lot of weekends at Fort Belvedere and it is through lunches at the Ritz with a group of wealthy American friends that Thelma meets the aspiring socialite, Mrs. Wallace Simpson and Wallace deliberately cultivates Thelma so she can get to meet the prince. She dreams of moving in royal circles. She's jealous of Thelma's Rolls Royce, of her jewels, of her country house, and she wants the prince. She wants to have a fling with the prince. She is terrified in the recession of the 1930s that her husband's shipping business will go broke she has this fling with the prince. She wants jewels and beautiful summer cruises with him, but she really wants to go back to Ernest, her husband. She doesn't want a limp lover either. She sends the prince off to have psychiatric treatment with Dr. Alexander Cannon, who specializes in sexual problems. And she has a fling with another lover. She does not want Edward to abdicate she likes being the royal mistress and having the jewels, but she wants to go back to her husband eventually. And she is very angry when he does abdicate. He threatens suicide unless she marries him, and she becomes a very glum bride. Lady Alexander Metcalf, who is at her wedding, records how grim and glum she was and that she refuses to kiss or embrace Edward, which is a very strange thing for a bride. And she has very much the domineering role in this marriage. He lavishes her with jewels and he is always the little Peter Pan prince who is abjectly in love with her. And, of course, I can't tell you all of the detail, the fascinating details about it, but it is all in Royal Mistresses of the House of Hanover Windsor.